Cool. Hey. I'm excited. What's going on, guys? Adara. Just chilling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We were saying downstairs, I think the last time we saw each other was at South by Southwest. South by Maybe Southwest. Maybe 2013. 13? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's been a minute. It's been a minute. What were the circumstances that you were both there? Well, under? that year was a dual thing for me with, with Parlor Tricks and with Kosha Dales. Really Parlor Tricks and then Kosha. If I'm anywhere with Kosha Dales, he's going to recruit me to be a documentarian as well. <laughs> so Kosha Dales is actually how we met in the first place. Yes. I started documenting him in 2011 in Baltimore. You probably didn't realize this, oh. but it was Baltimore the first time I saw you. And so I guess Rock Hood had just come out. That was a right? while back. Your yeah. first record? That's our first record, yeah. First record. And the most like, that's your big hit. That's your biggest hit, I would say. It was, right? yeah, because it was on the video game NBA 2K12. How yeah. did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. To this day, our, our manager at the time, and I think our drummer is the one that got that, like hooked that up or... Somehow finagled some, yeah. your, your song onto him. So it's like when you boot it up, it plays your song? Yeah, and everybody would like, everybody knows. It's like it's like our sticker. Our sticker is like more famous than the band. And that song that's is like how more I know famous you guys. than the exactly. band. That's what I wanted to <laughs> You're like yeah. on my mailbox outside of my apartment. <laughs> in so Brooklyn I, or yes, the in, in Bushwick. So I see I see it every day. You're, Shinobi you're Ninja. famous. Especially in New York, you are definitely famous as a a brand if not also as a band as a band but really your brand is like just larger than life because of this sticker it's yes. everywhere is their band their brand or their brand their band that's the eternal question <laughs> that well that is question. kind of that's i mean that's kind of a good question for you because and of what's how the difference much, well oh. the, well the, the there's the music and then there's everything else that you right. guys create which is so much i kind of just want to shout out all of your stats which are like 49 music videos. I added them up. Wow. You're Did good. you know that? That's insane. That is insane. So you've been a band for like... For how many albums? Yeah, si well, six years. Four albums. Is it? I'm going gonna, gonna to talk for you, but you could, yeah. you could jump in if I'm I wrong. was going to say, I was like, I hope she does, because I don't even know. I was like, you So just these are get music me. videos that aren't necessarily correlated to an album? These are official music videos, right? Yeah. Because then you have all these like behind the scenes stuff and fitness and fashion and, yeah. and tour life and stuff like that but as far as like official music videos i counted up 49 you made well then in like 2016 or in 2017 you made five already and then like 2011 and 14 you made like that's crazy like 15 videos there's something crazy yeah our newest album we made a video for every song on the album wow <laughs> And so we, ha I always tell people, I'm like, when people meet, I'm like, here's our sticker, and just pop some popcorn, go to YouTube, and have a field day with yeah. Ninja videos. It's like you'll be there for it's a, a while. It's a full experience. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, I would also like to read something that was written about you guys, because this is to go to the sticker point, because I think it really sums up this extra awareness people have about the band that's not about the music. So the outline wrote this about you guys, this website, the outline. They said, have you ever been followed on Twitter by Brooklyn DIY rock band Shinobi Ninja? Have you ever been unfollowed by the account and then followed again? Has the series of events happened to you more than once, more than twice, over and over again since 2009? If so, you're not alone. The band's mercurial social media habits have made it so that thousands of Twitter users, even if they have never heard its music, know the name Shinobi Ninja from somewhere. That's Which, how it's done. This yeah. Is very true. That's how you do it. This is very true. Some people, they will tell us, they'll be like, why did you unfollow us? I'm like, look, I have nothing to do with that. I'm just lead singer. Like, Well, there's a strategy, right? Yeah. Yeah. But are you saying the strategy is not yours or that you're not physically doing it? I'm I'm not doing it. I like I I barely when it comes to Twitter, it's like DA was asking me today. I was like looking at Instagram while I was waiting downstairs. He's like, you don't like Twitter. You don't like Twitter or Facebook. You wh why do you like Instagram so much? I'm like, 
listen, Twitter is just too difficult for me. Like, I don't, like, that <laughs> That thing is just, like, I don't even understand it. Like, honestly, I don't. Like, I may sound stupid, but I'm just looking at it, and I'm just like, I don't even know what's going on. Like, I'm like, who are half of these people, and I don't know what's what's, yeah. what's being okay. said. Like, it's, it's just a, a lot. It's a, it's an ongoing conversation. Like, any conversation, if you just jump into it, you're going to need time to understand what's going on. Yeah. yeah. You know? But it's super fortunate that you, the rest of your bandmates are, if, if it's just one, one or more, but you don't have to worry about it because they are on top of it. Oh, they are. So that's nice. Yeah. So if you're saying, if you if, as your solo act or, you know, if you wanted to go off even further because you're still kind of connected as a solo artist, you wouldn't be on, be on the social media in the way that they are. Not really. I No. I try to, like, post things and stuff, but... The majority of the time, I'm not. I'm gonna be honest. I'll be like, "Who cares?" And I'm not like, I'm not saying that I don't care. I'll be like, "Really? Does anybody care what I ate for breakfast or about this my birthday meal?" And I'm they like, do, "I know." And that's the thing. It's like <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, I forgot. I had the most amazing meal today, and I forgot to take a picture. I'm sorry, guys. I remember I wrote that one time, and they were all like, "I got so many good. Like, it's okay. Just live your life." And I was like, "Yeah, you're right. I was just living. I wasn't thinking about taking a picture." Yeah. But the band is like, I'm my soul stuff, and the band are just like when it comes to social media is just like the opposite. It's like we're just two different things. Like we're just like Shinobi Ninja is like up here and Adara is just like right here. Like mm. like not even halfway. I'm just like I gotta like catch up to them. Like Yeah. Is there a culture of like pressure with like are, do they say like hey why didn't you post or like why didn't you make a video for us today? Yeah, like it's like why don't you post a picture? It's like you haven't posted a picture in a month and I'm like wow I'm glad that you know that because I didn't even know that and then I'll think and I'll be like I haven't posted a picture in a month I'm like okay and so then I'll like yeah. try to like take a picture and then DA will be like there's all these amazing pictures of the band and you just want to take a picture of you smiling in the street I'm like because it's in the moment don't people want to <laughs> see what's happening in the moment like I don't well, know I'm yeah the rules to... are confusing yeah, yeah exactly but it seemed to work for you guys or is working yeah I mean and and I do think the stickers are like at least in New York, and, and having toured around and, and sort of making this documentary that I'm doing about like being a musician and being in the rock scene, going around the country and seeing your sticker in literally every place we went, every shitty dive bar, <laughs> every, every venue, like any rock club that you go to anywhere in this country, you will see a Shinobi Ninja sticker. And, and, and in New York especially, it becomes sort of like this arty, like, why are they everywhere? Why is it so ubiquitous? And so it felt like these kind of like the footprints of like, this is what a, a rock band does. Like they go here, they go here, they go here, they play here all the time and they're in the Lower East Side and they're in Bushwick and they're here. But and then it adds up to something that's more than a rock band. Right. It, it starts to feel like a movement. Right? Yeah. You're like, what we are, is we this? We are like a mythology. Like a yeah. We are. And those stickers are like, people want those stickers. It's like when you give somebody a sticker, they are super excited and I get so many pictures from people and they'll send me a picture and they'll t take a picture of the sticker and I'm like where like I just curious like where was that like I had this girl say to me one time at my job she's like I didn't know because I friended her on Instagram she's like I didn't know that you were in Shinobi Ninja and I looked at her and she was like literally like and she's like I have that sticker outside my yeah. apartment in Bushwick and she's like I never even knew that it was a band let alone that you were in it and then you <laughs> friended me and I saw the sticker on your thing and I was just like she went in and I was just like man that sticker made my life it made me more popular to her yeah, it made like me look legendary. good yeah it makes me that sticker just makes me it makes me it's also the design like do you like what was the inception of that was it one of you guys that was like guys I have this amazing logo we're gonna make it a sticker DA. Yeah. it's like he took the colors he always tells people he took the colors from Katy Perry her album it was like blue and pink mm -hmm. and it's like me personally when it first our very first stickers were black and red and I and it wasn't like the color that we picked it was because it was the cheapest like colors to make for the stickers because uh -huh. the blue and pink are, are more expensive and he was like and then all of a sudden, one day, he was like, blue and pink. And I was like, blue and pink. We're a rock band. And you want us to have blue and pink stickers. Like, I wasn't with it. Like, I was, like, over it. Like, I was over him. I'm like, I'm over the font. I'm always just I'm just <laughs> over this. And everybody fell in love with it. They fell in love with the name. They fell in love with the stickers. They fell in love with the Pac-Man font. It's like, everybody just loves it. And now it. It, it's synonymous with yeah. you guys, the way, the, the, the whole look of everything. Yeah. So I'm curious, then... 
there's so much stuff surrounding the music and it's coming back to the brand versus band thing. How much, um, you know, all of that, that extra stuff is able to translate into something that either dollars or scenarios, situations that allow the band to be sustainable Mm -hmm. and like, you know, make money. Like I think you all have day jobs or some of you have day jobs and, you know, but you tour all the time. Oh, yeah. How much does all this social media and the YouTube right. videos and all this stuff. Followers don't pay. Right. But or does some of it become monetized? Like how much is this actually? I mean, helpful? like we can monetize like we monetize like our YouTube views and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And we we figure out ways to monetize like other other things. But like you have some creative merch. Yeah. Our our merch game is like <laughs> like People can't, they can't touch our merch game. Every no. single time we go places, people will, even if they don't buy something from us, but the majority of the time people are always buying things, they're always like, your merch table is amazing. It's like, we got chapstick, we got lighters, you have, sweatshirts, you have we knuckles. used to have sneakers. Yes, we had knuckles, and we're getting sneakers again now for the 311 show. Yeah, sneakers. It's like, yeah, sneakers, they like, they're That's like, amazing. look like Vans, yeah. but they're not Vans, they're just like some knockoff shoes. And this guy, <laughs> Juice Man, he draws on them, and he, do, and he does them in pink and blue, and people fell in love with them. At first, I was like, really? People are going to buy Shinobi Ninja sneakers? We sold out of the sneakers. People would come and be like... Do you have size? And I'm like, we only got size 12. We only have these Converse left. Like, people love the sneakers. But we we make money, like, when we do shows and stuff like that. Like, to make a living, like, off of, like, we would have to be on the road, like, 24-7. And it's just, like, what's the point of having an apartment? And, like, some people are just, like, have boyfriends and girlfriends and, you know, like, other other things that they're doing. I mean, Shinobi Ninja is number is number one to us. But, yeah, some of us have day – like, I have a day job. Not all of us, but some yeah. of us have day jobs. Did job you used then. to tour more than you are now? Oh, we used to tour way – like, back when we first started. I remember one year – so there's 365 days in a year. We did, like, 200-and-something shows one year. Damn. We – like, that was, like – like one of our first years, like we took any and every show that was offered to us. Mm-hmm. And you're booking yourselves. You're like, I mean, the epitome of DIY, yeah. everything. Uh, yourself. Do you have like a team now or a manager? It's all you. Now right? we have a, a manager that we're in the works of signing with. We can just, he's, we, it's, he's our manager. And um, we okay. still do, we're working on getting a booking agent. But we still do everything ourselves. Like, we have our own 15-passenger van. Like, we started off using U-Haul, um, U-Hauls, and then we were like, okay, that's a little expensive. So we just got a van, and we got a trailer, mm-hmm. and we were just like, if we're going to do it, then we're just like, let's just do it for real. Like, 100%, like, let's just go out there and do it. And so you booked all those, like, 200 shows? shows and- all by ourselves, yeah. And we still, we still book some things by ourselves but then it came to the point where we were like we had to live and it was like it was all fun and we were young like we've been doing it now for like nine years I think and it was like okay now it's like okay we gotta make money like we gotta like if I'm gonna take off this day yeah exactly it's like people getting married it's like we gotta like make money and so we pick and choose the shows that we do now we wish we can do all of them like I wish, like, I would I would totally do all of them. Like, we wish that we can do all of them, but some people are just like, no, we're not. If we're not getting paid this much money, we're not going to do the show. Does that sort of feel like it's watering down in any way, like the Shinobi Ninja kind of, like, badass just hustle thing? I mean... Like, is, it's, is it a new era for Shinobi Ninja in that it's sense? It's definitely a new era, but I think it allows us to do shows like like the 311 shows that are coming up like we're getting ready to open up for 311 we have three shows with them and it allows us to do shows like that cuz i think that they 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 see and they can see us in in like on a different level as opposed to being like that band that's still like okay where well, we're going to go play I can't think of Trash Bar, which doesn't even probably exist anymore. But it's like okay, we're like past Trash Bar. But when we Does first started, we would anymore? play Trash no, Bar. I, I first someone told me. I think someone told me that they, it didn't, but it might. I don't know. But yeah, it's like we're like we're far from from that now. We just played Brooklyn Bowl nice. a couple of weeks ago or something. We uh-huh. opened up for HR from Bad Brains. That was a great show. So we're trying to. We're trying to get to that level. Okay. Like this, three eleven is like where we want to be. We want to open up for big names. Yeah. We want to like. So it's kind of like you have to like pull yourself back and be like, okay, well, I really want to do your showcase, but I really can't. That's because... not where we want to be anymore. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. How have you guys stayed so committed to the hustle over these years? 
I don't know. We're hungry. Like, yeah. we're hungry. Like, we but just wanted... how do you wanted... keep that? <sighs> I don't know. Is there one of you who, like, pushes the others through... I think that's DA. DA is, like, okay. the... He's like the he's one, here right now. like, yeah, he's, he's like the one that we're working all the time, yeah. all the time. And he's like, he'll take us, he'll send us a, a group text of a tweet. He'll be like, look at so and so said this about us. And it's like, and they'll just like, it'll just keep our, us motivated to be like, what? And it's like, <laughs> so and so just started following us. Like, we got ver- t- verified on Twitter. It's like, and so it just, he keeps us motivated. Like, we all, motivate each other but if there had to be one he's the one that's like make sure that we all keep our head in the game yeah. mm-hmm. and know what the end goal is because we've been doing it for so long yeah right. right and being this sort of uh diy legendary diy band would being on a label be something that would be of interest to you or is it because it like ruin everything right <laughs> i know right well if we didn't have to change ourselves that's one thing we don't want to change ourselves right like or be in less control. Yeah. Like, we, it's, you know, if a label, it's like, it's hit or miss. It's like, you don't want to get signed to a label and then they look at you like, we don't know what to do with you. And then you're you're shelved. And then it's like, when you're with a label, it's like, you can't go off and do this show if, if it's not approved by a label. Mm-hmm. So being DIY is like, we could do that. Like, we could pick and choose the shows that we want to do. Yeah. But at the same time, with the label, it's like, they can get you to the next level I feel like they can do something that you wouldn't be able to do yourself but hopefully get you to the next level as yourself as yourself not a repackaged thing that looks like other things that are at that level yeah and I think that's why we've been doing it so long by ourselves like we've been approached and stuff but it's never been anything that's been like oh this is this is the one Mm -hmm. it's like I remember one time like we worked with this producer and it was just like like we don't even sound anything like that song you're giving us. Like that sound sounds great, and of course some of the band members we were at each other's neck. Like, which yeah, this guy he's worked with so and so and so, and we're just like, who cares? But that sound sounds like he should bring it back to so and so. Like that's not us, and it's and then it's like we haven't like we and then we meet some producers that obviously that are good. I mean we produce our own stuff, but yeah, we we want to keep it real. We don't yeah. want to lose our fans that have been with us since day 1 mm-hmm. yeah. and have them be like, "Oh, they they're sellouts. Like they just sold out like to make it to the next step." Right. right? And I think that's why people like love us a lot and we have a lot of um like genuine and committed fans like that are just like they've been with us from the beginning from the Rock Hood days, right. Brooklyn to Babylon days because they just know they're like they're like how have you guys been doing it for so long and stay true to yourself and we're like because we're just staying true to ourselves we're not letting anybody change us mm-hmm. it's like and we're doing it ourselves it's like sometimes you want it so bad that you're just like okay well if this person says they're going to work with you but you got to change this you're ready to do that right. and we're like no like we definitely are going to do this and it's going to be Shinobi yeah. Ninja. Do you run into many disagreements within the band? I mean, it seems like a democracy from the outside, not knowing how it works for you guys. But like with writing, I mean, just being in a six person band, coming to a consensus seems like it could be tricky at times. Like how does how do the band dynamics work out? There are a lot of dynamics. I'm like, we've been together, like I said, I think nine years. I'm, I'm the worst when it comes to that. But we we have like we've never broken up. We've never been like announced like the band is breaking up or we're like the band is is done like we've been strong all this time it's like like who who writes we make it work um i write my own stuff and lately i've been working with uh, a writer on my solo stuff and on some other stuff that i did with shinobi but da he writes his own stuff and then the band when it comes to the music like we produce our own stuff and it's like it could be a collab. Maybe somebody will bring something to the table and, and they'll start off with a small idea and then everybody just throws in stuff and then it becomes this one finished product yeah. of whatever the song is and stuff. But yeah, we just... we. So you just came stuff. out with an album in March? I think so. I think This year, March. I think? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bless, bless Up. Bless Up, yeah. Which, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, it feels like there's a little bit more... Uh, more m- mellow tracks on it mellower yeah. for you guys is yeah. that right yeah okay is does that represent this kind of new chapter and sort of like getting older and being sort of in a different place in life or is it the world or like why what why would you say that is 
I don't know. I just think it was where we were at the time in the moment, like writing the music, like going through, um, like not working with the manager that we first started off with and just like being like working with the producers and being like, we don't want to do that. Like, this is what we want to do with just being ourselves. And, and I don't even, I don't know if it's really so much us growing. It's like it, it does have a lot of mellow tracks, and we and we would <laughs> well, relatively <laughs> we would realize that because we'd be like, wait, we don't want to like we don't want to do this song on stage. It's like it's way too like compared to our right. other songs. So we found ourselves not for anything going back to our old catalog and bringing like that adding that with our new catalog for the to live like, shows for mean? the live shows to okay. spice it up but it's good it's like it's it's good it just takes it to the next level but i think also too is like people like would say like there's one song that we have on the bless up album called what if times that everybody loves and it's like it's just really da and i talking about like ourselves and that sides of ourselves that people didn't really know and it's and and when i when we perform it i usually tell everybody i was like if you can give us a moment to get sensitive on you you know like some people think that we can be sensitive and it and it really blows people's minds it's like it blows their minds cuz we're just like raw like yeah yeah <laughs> like going crazy and then all of a sudden we're just like uh, like wave your hands put up the lighters and it's just like they're like you guys made that song like yeah we're very diverse very eclectic like right. you don't know where we're gonna hit you with and I think that's why not I think that's why people like us because there's yeah. a little bit for everybody mm -hmm. you know it's like you, people don't know what genre to put us in absolutely because we're just our music is just like just all over the place yeah. which I love it I mean the trick to that is it can make it a little bit harder for people to find you this is true. But then ultimately you can attract more people. Yeah. Once yeah. they discover you. Yeah. So that's right. the long game. And that's like trusting that your shit is good. Yeah. So like respect to that, you know? Yeah. And that's yeah. how it should be. It shouldn't be totally. like you have to be one thing. I think like this mishmash of things is like, you know, what everyone should. There should be a space for that. Yeah. I mean, I'm tempted to say that we are worse about it now than we used to be. But actually, I'm sure it's always been hard for artists to like, experiment, for yeah. artists to switch up genres, to try to go in new so directions. Always, we always are very been. quick to punish. Yeah. You know? Right. And if a certain artist is does one thing for a while and then switches, then it's like, ah, oh, no. that's the worst. That's yes. the kiss of death. Yeah. yeah. Um, was singing always a goal for you? or Because I know you used to be a dancer, right? Yeah. Well, when I first moved to New York, Believe it or not, I was very shy. Like younger, when I was younger, I always sang and danced. Uh -huh. But dancing for me was like a drop of a dime. Like you'd be like dancing, I'm like, I'm ready. I'm like, I'll give it to you. <laughs> you'd be like singing, I'm like, crickets. It's like you, I couldn't get my mouth open. And my grandmother was like to my mom. My mom's like, she's never gonna sing in front of people. She's so shy. My grandma's like, she's gonna do it. Like you know, like she's gonna get out of that shyness one day. Yeah. And so a lot of people back home, when they see me now, they're like, their jaws drop. <laughs> because like in high school, like everything, like I was just so shy. Like I would Were dance in, in talent shows. Like I wasn't in the choir. Okay. Like uh, the very first time I sang was like my senior year. Like when people would hear me sing, like I probably sang like in eighth grade, but I was like, mm. <laughs> like very low. Like it was just like, it was crazy, but that when I moved to New York, I used to audition for off Broadway shows, wow. and I would do good as in the a singing, dancer, as a as a singer who danced because okay. it was like more technical dancing. So when it came to like ballet and jazz, I've never was technically trained, mm -hmm. and so I would always just do good in the singing part. And but when it came to that, I was just like a mess. And then one day I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna put that on hold, and I'm gonna just go strong into the hip hop dancing. Yeah. And I was like, because I always wanted to do videos, and that's what I moved to New York for for a dance program. But I still sing, so I I joined the um I started taking classes and stuff, and then I got into an agency and I started booking jobs and doing that. Uh -huh. And then one day I was dancing for this artist and her um, name Tara, and her man her manager slash producer what whatever told me he's like. If you want to be a singer, you have to start taking vocal classes. Like, you've already accomplished yourself as a professional dancer. And I was like, you know what? If you feel that way, you know what I'm saying? If you could respect that, I respect that, too. I'm like, you just call me a professional dancer, which is true. I'm getting paid to do what I love to do. And so then I put that to the side. And I started taking vocal class. And where I was taking vocal class is where I met DA. He was working there. And then Mikey, he started interning there and eventually started working there. And then I met his twin brother and Axis, the DJ. They all used to be in a band. So that's, like, how I met everybody. And then, like, 
one day they asked me to be in they they started the band like a month before they asked me to be in it and then I was just like one day DA heard me rapping and I was just joking around doing the Mary J Blige like um Met the man shorty, you're there for me anytime. And then he was like, let me find out that you can rap. And I was like, I'm not rapping. I'm just saying what Met the man is saying. And then I've always been like a goon. Like, I've always, like, I used to play a hype girl for this girl, Amanda Seals. Like, I was her hype girl. And so they were like, you want to be in the band? And I'm like, sure. I don't know what I'm going to do. But <laughs> So I had to kind of, like, find my role. At the beginning, I, I called myself the hype girl. And then the rock hood rap was initially DA was doing it. And then he was like, we're taking my vocals out and we're going to put your vocals out, yeah. vocals in. So then I started doing the rap and everybody loved it. Like opened and then, up everything. Yeah, it's like I'm just like a character on stage. And it was just <laughs> like, it's just fun. It's like, it's like I know people say they have the alter egos. I guess you can say it's like my alter ego, but yeah. it was just fun to me. And it was just natural. And so then I just started doing that and eventually found my role in the band and became the second lead singer. I used to always say that I was a hype girl and they're like, you're not yeah. the hype girl, like they and made all the songs. Yeah, they made all the. Well, the first album they made all this. Like the majority of the songs were already done before I was in the band, so it was like let's fit her in there, and it wasn't like really written for my range and stuff like that. But the second album was like geared to both yeah. lead singers. Mm -hmm. It's funny that you call it an alter ego in a way, and kind of to what we were talking about before we started, is there's such a party. Um, character to the whole band to like each of you individual and and the band as a whole and it's funny to hear you know you don't really drink and and I'm I'm wondering if as as the years go on if that's shifting at all and it's such like a sort of identity of the band if that will you know start to change at all what change what the party vibe the party vibe Party vibe is never gonna change. <laughs> Shinobi Ninja, when we come on stage, well, it's there's a, a difference party. between party and. No, I know what you mean, but you know, it kind of reminds me of the Funkadelic and how it's like a collective of people having a good time, right? And George Clinton is fucking old now, but he's still <laughs> emblematic of that feeling, right? But I do kind of associate your band with an actual, whereas in a lot of bands that I think we found to be true uncharacteristically of rock bands of the of of your, right? There isn't this like party in the sense of drinking and drugs right. and rock and roll and on all of that and i think that your band in a gleeful way i find has that element of it they're like party in yeah. terms of like going hard and having a really good time yeah and so like that's what i meant by like will that shift as as things you know do you want to like start drinking juices and things like that well what do but, you mean by that like you think it's inferred from the music I guess maybe knowing them. Or you know I that the know. band has a good time. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's because I partied with you. Yeah, we still, <laughs> I don't know. We still party hard. It's not <laughs> like we're like, it's not like we haven't, we've gotten to the point where it's like, after the show, we're like, okay, guys, well, we got to go back to the hotel now. We're tired. Like, it's right, like, right, exactly. We're ready to still, like, we're still smoking before the show. We're still smoking after the show. We're still telling people, hit it, meet us at the bar. I mean, That's I don't I mean. drink, but I'm always like, meet me outside. It's like, people know they, when they come to the show, right, you're not like, I have to they're stop ready. talking now. They're they rolled to go up. To sleep. They're ready to meet us in the but back. But I'm surprised with how hard you guys work that you can do that. Yes. That's very rare. Yeah. Right. And we were talking about close calls, being on tour and, and sort of like, needing to smoke all the weed before people were checking your car and all of that. And yet, like, so you're, like, blazing up on the road and then being so productive and so prolific <laughs> with your output of stuff. It's oh, like, yeah. we try. I, people make, some other bands make me laugh. We'll be like, yeah, we're going outside to smoke. Do you guys want to come? And they'll be like, nah, not until after the show. And we're like, not until after the show. <laughs> it's like, it's before the show and after the show. But, okay, we'll see you after the show. It's like... No, right. Like, so the good time changed. is like an is real. Uh, the theme laughing? of this podcast is Dara trying to figure out how people are more productive than she is. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's very real. No, it's and me. I mean, it's like, no, but it's, 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 very it's totally mystifying. true. And and then you add in like being blazed. It's right. Like, exactly. Wow. Mind blown. <laughs> yeah. I wish. <laughs> you're like you do all that. And you're more weed high. than me. I don't understand. <laughs> right. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> right. Also, I'm curious, um, having been part, this is the other theme of this podcast, um, having been part of a six-person band, I was one of three females. You are the one woman touring, uh, you know, sometimes 200 plus shows a year. With how many guys? In a 15-passenger van with five dudes. And they're the dudes, yeah. you know? <laughs> and you're partying and doing whatever you're doing how is that for you and what 
have you found to be like a, a way of like maintaining solace and, and keeping yourself like grounded in any way, if that's a thing? I mean, sometimes for me, like my biggest thing is, is like our new manager is a guy like whenever we go on the road, like if we bring a photographer, it's a guy. If we bring one of our friends, it's a guy. It's always a guy. I'm like literally always the only girl. Mm -hmm. And so like if if we go to a show or something like we are really big in, in North Carolina, there'll be I'm ready to see my girls over there because I'm ready to just like get out the van and be like, OK, hey, how you ladies doing? And just hang I survived. Like it's it's funny because somebody we had an interview the other day. Like a like a, somebody emailed us an interview and they asked a question like that. And I was just like, I consider myself one of the guys. Right. It's like, I'm like, I'll let them know. I'll be like, guys, I'm a period. <laughs> I'm not feeling good today. I'm like, I'm sorry, I was a little snippy. I'm just, I just got a period. Like everything, right. you know. Like we've gotten to that point. Like it's just like they're my brothers. It's right. like they know everything. It's like. I'm going to tell them everything. And my biggest thing, it sound, this is going to sound crazy, but my biggest thing is in the winter. I hate touring with the guys in the winter because they're always hot and I'm always <laughs> cold. And it's like, I'm like, in the summertime, let's roll down the windows. Let's do it. Like, I'm living. Like, But the winter winter time, like, let's roll up the windows. Like, let's not have any AC on. Like, I know we just came off stage. Like, I'm freezing. Like, I'm, like I hate touring in the winter. Like, I just, I don't like it at all. Let me tell you something. It's also a summertime problem because in this office during the summer, it is fucking 30 degrees in here because the men come in their shirts and their jackets and they're generally hotter than we are anyway. And the temperature gets adjusted for them and the women freeze all winter. See, you feel me. I feel you. And that's what and and I like I think it was like one of our very first interviews. Somebody asked and I was like, I'm always cold. And D.A. was laughing. They all started laughing like, what, what? kind of answer is that? And I was like, no, guys, it's true. Like, that's the only thing that bothers me about you guys is the cold. It's real. But other than that, I'm just like, I'm just used to just always it's always guys like. Yeah. But how does that play out like when you have to interact with people at a venue? I assume that you're not often the first person that people turn to to ask a question. Definitely not. No. It's always it's always them. I well yeah. I I I tend to stay away from like trying to like not so like are you good with charge, that? but like I'm good with just like being in the back. Like okay. sometimes people that even know the band mm -hmm. and that don't know the band, like I, I'm the merch girl, so I'll set up the merch because like I'm the girl, so I know how to do it nice and neat and everything. <laughs> like they try, but I'm just like no, like <laughs> that looks crazy. I'm gonna yeah. fix it. Like, and the majority of the time, people will always come up to me after the show and be like, "I thought you were the merch girl." They're like, do you "I have didn't a merch know person? you were in the band." Now we do, yeah. yeah. They're like, "I didn't know you were in the band," and I'm like, <sighs> "I know. I just keep it low key, like." I'm never like, you know, like I just let them handle everything like they know, like I never want to I don't want to be put in that role. I don't want to be like the mom. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I do worst. try to tell them, like, don't sleep on the sheets at the hotel because they don't wash them. <laughs> like they don't <laughs> listen. Like, well, tip. well, there's like the jump in. Off, yeah, right, I'm a yeah. comforter. Yeah, I'll take the now they do that, especially Alex, the bass player. Like the, it makes me laugh, like because we have certain people like we we'll share rooms. Uh -huh. It'll be me, D.A. and Alex and D.A. and I mean, Alex, they'll come and they'll take the sheets off off nice. of the bed like right. right away. Like they know and I'm like, These I tell you guys well. Expert tricks. Yeah, I was like, I tell you well, but everything else is like I've got them into like we used to do Walmart a lot. A uh, Walmart was our our place to go. But then one day I've introduced them as we got, you know, you know, and started making a little money and stuff. We got into Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. And so now when we go on the road, it's like they love Whole Foods because they got the hot section nice. and it will always, you know, <laughs> does Googling. have a good hot bar. Yeah, yeah the, the Whole Foods. And so I feel like, you know, I'm there to like. So you're not a mom. You're not the mother, but you're like. Slip it in. Yeah, here and I there. slip it in here and there. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fine. What I hate is when I can tell they're waiting for me to become the mother. Mm. Like I have some guys in this office who are good friends of mine, and I've talked to them about this before. They will fuck around and goof off and escalate their like giggling because they know at a certain point I'm gonna whip around and be like, "Knock it off, guys." Because people are working, you know, and they'll like they'll like look at me like they're waiting, they're waiting. It's like they're little schoolboys waiting for <laughs> teacher to yell at them, and right. I'm like, do not put me in that position. I do not want to have right. to be your mother. Because this is fucked up, and you're doing it because I'm a woman, and you're waiting for like exactly. mommy to scold you. The same way, yeah, otherwise. yeah, and it, yeah. So I but think you just gotta it? call it out. I yell at them. I do exactly what they're expecting me to do. But then I yell at them again for, for making it, me for yell. Making at them. Yeah. Yell. Good. <laughs> that should shut them up. Yeah. 
it's worked. It's gotten better. Because if you call them out for being for acting that way, that's more embarrassing. Like yes, they don't exactly. want to be called out for like wanting. Oh, and I mean this one guy, and it, I, I hope he listens to this. He's actually a big fan of the show, but I won't say his name. But he uh, he was being ridiculous on a set that we were on one day, and I called him out for it, and he said that I was like his drunken aunt, <laughs> and I shut things down. Good. I called him out yeah. so hard. I was like, don't you fucking yeah, dare wow. call me that. And we're on a set right now. And I have a crew that's working here right now. Do not paint me that way. That I like the last thing I want to be is that you're forcing me to be right. that. Yeah. It was a moment. It's, but I feel like we grew after projection. it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> like, I'm, not, that's not my job is to teach you how to be an adult. Right. You know, this is true, like your yeah. mother should have done that. <laughs> your real mother. Or your fucking drunken or aunt. Or what you're an that? adult now. So teach yourself. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, you uh, you played the LGBT Expo recently. Yes, I did. I played it last year, and I played it again this year. How did that happen? Okay, so it's funny. I when I came up with my solo thing, and I put it out like, oh, I'm gonna release some solo music just for fun. It wasn't like I'm going solo. I'm leaving the band. Right away, this this guy uh, uh, I used to dance with hit me up and was like, do you want to perform at the LGBT Expo? And I was like. And DA produces my music, so DA is always like, you got to get the music out there. So I was like, not really. Like, I just literally released the music, and he hit me up that day. Huh. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I have some songs. Like, I had a, a song that was a hit in um, in uh, Seattle. So I was like, oh, okay, I got some songs from there. Like, I guess I could put something together, get me some some dancers, and, and, and you know, make it happen. And that's all that came about. And then this year, uh, artist that we met there last year, um, DA wrote a song with him. And he and DA's a hustler, so he he hit him up and was like, "Hey, you think you could play guitar at the LGBT Expo this year? I'm performing." He's like, "Yeah, if you can get Baby G in it." And I was like, "Why are you always involving me in everything?" I was like, <laughs> "So then I was like, okay, fine, here we go, rehearsal space. Let's Why go. are you reluctant and, like that? I don't know. It's it's like." I don't know. I was just like, I. it's not that I don't think that I'm like ready. It's just like I just wasn't mentally ready. I'm just like releasing music mm -hmm. and I'm not thinking that shows are going to like pop up and, and like be there to like go and do. But I guess so it's things like, are still happening. You're sort of still just like, oh, this is happening now. Now this is happening. It's not like you were ahead of the um, kind of like desire it was like happening to you're like oh now I'm, I'm taking singing lessons now I'm in a band and now I'm <laughs> I'm I'm making music and now I have to perform it it's sort of yeah coming qu quicker than yeah than you would have imagined cool where yeah. did the moniker baby g come from baby g I had a friend that always used to call well an ex-boyfriend that always used to be like baby g baby g baby g baby baby girl baby girl oh. baby girl and then the guys always heard that so they started calling me baby girl baby girl like teasing me and then when we started making up names for the for um our, ourselves yeah, like uh -huh. mikey uh kid shreddy and that's a guitar player and alien lex the bass player yeah. terminated dave is the drummer uh -huh. and duke sims because we have two daves in the band so the other lead singer changed his name to da duke Sims. he has literally so he many has names so I many names it's today. like i don't know which one he wants to go by yeah. but that's another thing about shinobi ninja it's like Oh, of course you're going to make up names for, totally. for yourself. Yeah. yeah. That's well, like, part of the like, mythology. Yeah, ninja names or something, right? <laughs> I never I've never had a nickname growing up. It's always been Adara or Dara for sure. My uh -huh. my family calls me Dara and good name. They were like and and then Axis is the DJ is like, I don't know how I feel. This is true. So he's like, I don't know how I feel about calling you baby girl because that was Aaliyah's name and I loved Aaliyah. And I was like, well, cool. I love Dalia too, but I never, I never thought of it but like that. Damn. I was like, I never <gasps> thought that, like, that I was taking a right. name. <laughs> yeah. So I That's dropped the, okay. the girl. I was like, I'm dropping the girl. Oh, really? I'm going of that? With, yeah. I was like, I'm going with Baby G. And I was like, That's it. And it, That's I was funny. like, She was Baby Girl. I'm Baby G. Yeah. And and that's what we and that's what we stuck with. And everybody knows me now as Baby Dara G. Baby G. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. No, I love it also because you're like a fucking badass, take no prisoner singer. So it's like uh, this amazing irony. Right. Like, I love that. Yeah. Thanks. It's a good juxtaposition. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what's next for you guys? What's happening? Well, for the band, we're getting ready to open up for 311. Right. Uh, we got some shows with them. We're playing on Halloween. This is exciting. I don't know oh, if cool. I'm going to dress up or not. But we're playing on Halloween with them. And uh, I believe the 30th and the 28th. 
And then um, we're going to L.A. in November for um, networking. We'll mm-hmm. be out there from the 9th through the 13th. Did I see you have a song in a Spike Lee movie coming up? Yeah, Spike That's Lee is amazing. doing a show called She's Gotta Have It for Netflix, like one of those oh, Netflix yeah. things. Oh, yeah, you have a song in that. And we have a song in that, yeah. Cool, amazing. I, I, I don't heard know that when it's going to really be good. released. Really? Yeah. It's like he's we he had a like a, a listening party, and I was like, yeah, all right, Spike Lee's not gonna be there. And literally, we walk up the stairs to go into the door, and Da's like, oh what God. up, Spike Lee? Like, like he's known him forever, and I'm like, my jaw just drops. Like, yo, Spike Lee is here. Like, <laughs> like he's in the building. Like, this is awesome. Like, he was so down to earth. Like, yeah. we have pictures with him. He was so cool. That's I, awesome. We can't wait for that. That's that to exciting. Drop, that we can hear where because he was telling everybody like everybody's song has a specific. Like part of the show, oh, like I'm is sure. going yeah, to yeah. the music. story is very deliberate. What song is it? Music. It's our song "Genuine," which was actually a song, a song that Da wrote when he was a solo artist before the band. And then when the band came, it was just such a great song. We had to just do it over. Cool. So we did it over, and we said, I don't know if he submitted other music or just that song, but we submitted that song and. So when that comes out on Netflix, that's going to be So awesome. you guys, amazing. Some, you like made that happen yourselves mm-hmm. though. That's, mm-hmm. yeah. The hustle. The hustle. Yeah. Well, keep, keep hustling. Keep if hustling, it, baby. Yeah, whatever, whatever happens, like if it's, if it's the next level, if it's however it goes, you guys just keep being you. I have so much love for Shinobi Ninja. I have so much love for you Thanks. guys. Thank you for coming. Thanks. This has been amazing. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was awesome. I, I mean, anytime I get to talk about the band is a good thing especially without the guys i love them so much but when we do interviews if you see interviews i'm literally like yeah i'm no. so quiet i just let them talk and like and and they will just answer questions like take 20 minutes to answer <laughs> one question and i'm just like and i'm like do you even remember the question she asked because you still haven't answered it <laughs> like so i'm just like i'm like interview by myself i think that i got this Hell because yeah. the other guys they're just like there would be too much sometimes <laughs> No, you got it. So Thank this is you. awesome. So Thank happy you. to meet you here. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You got that? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely going to keep that. <laughs> she said, so happy to meet you here. <laughs> A nice bookend, too. We met four years ago.